G'day, Ben from Duck Plain Chicken here. Today I want to talk about this stuff, airbrush cleaner. And not necessarily the Vallejo stuff, but any airbrush cleaner that's sort of designed for water-based acrylic paints. Because this stuff I used to go through quite a bit of. You know, I would be airbrushing, you know, fairly regularly, and I'd go through quite a bit of this stuff. And it's not cheap. So this is a, I believe it's 200 mil, yep, 200 mil bottle. And this is about $15 Australian. Don't ask me what that is in American dollars. Um, but yeah, $15 Australian. That's all we need to know as far as a comparison. So what I have since worked out is that there is a lot cheaper way to, um, to make this stuff. Now this is different from thinners. Um, thinners, I always use the actual paint brands thinners because uh, they're designed specifically for those paints. But uh, in the case of something that's cleaner, you're not worried about how it reacts with the paint on a model. You're worried about how quickly it gets the stuff off your, your airbrush. So I'm going to show you what my home brew is for this particular stuff that's a hell of a lot cheaper. Now I want to talk a bit about the paints. I'm going to test it on and show you how they go. So the first one is this stuff, which I kind of put all in the same category. They're all the same stuff. They're basically a polyurethane primer. Um, whether it's MIG One Shot, Ultimate Primer or Steinol Res, I believe it all comes out of the, uh, the Badger factory. So I'll be testing it up against um, you know this. Also the Vallejo Mecca Color. And I've also got an AK uh, color as well I want to test it on. So what goes in my home brew? Before we look at the testing, what goes in it? The prime ingredients is this stuff. Now, you're not going to be able to read that label because it's kind of uh, come off a little bit, but it's actually butyl glycol ether. Now this stuff is a solvent and it's quite often used in paints. It mixes really well with water. Now you don't want to be using that stuff all by itself as far as a cleaner goes. So what I do is I mix it with just some distilled water. And I mean this stuff's dirt cheap. You can get this for you know dollar a litre in Australia, a bit less. Um, and distilled water is different from tap water. Distilled water has had all the minerals and impurities taken out, which means you don't want to be drinking that stuff. It'll actually make you really crook. Um, so what I do is I take about a third of the butyl glycol ether and I top it up with about two thirds water. So it's a two to one ratio. Most of it's water, which is great because that's the cheapest ingredient. And I've found that that mix works pretty well. I'm, I know some people will add maybe a bit of glycerin, you know, as a bit of a lubricant for the airbrush and stuff, but I found I don't need to do that. So basically, distilled water and butyl glycol ether. Butyl glycol. It's got a couple of different names, so, um, but essentially it's, yeah, it's a, it's a solvent. Okay, so what I've done is I've already sort of pre-mixed it, and I'm going to do a comparison between my home brew the Vallejo airbrush cleaner, and also just straight distilled water. So just some of this by itself to see how that goes. And then I'll sort of talk about the price difference between um, all of these, these products. So first thing first, I've set up a test plate, and this is just a ceramic tile. Of course, it's not, um, it's not the same as an airbrush, but it's still a non-porous surface that the paint sticks to. And this paint's been here for um, about two days, so it's well and truly plastered on there. And on the top row, we have the Steinol Res primer. In the middle row, we have the Mecca Color. Uh, it's just a dark gray. And then finally, it's a bit hard to tell on camera, but it is, um, it's actually the AK reddish brown, uh, reddish black. I should have chosen three very different colors, but it doesn't matter. Um, Steinol Res, Mecca Color, and then AK. So the first one is the distilled water. So I'm just gonna take a dropper and just drop the water on. I'll give it 
Now I've got the tape on there just to sort of make sure that the the cleaning agents that I'm using don't interfere with each other. So I just want to make sure it's covering the covering the paint swabs. Next one I'm going to use is the airbrush cleaner from Vallejo. And I should say this product's not a bad product. It it works as advertised. I'm not having a go at this product in any manner. Um, it's you know served me very well. I just find it incredibly expensive. That's all for uh, for what it is. So I'm just going to carefully. few drops of this stuff on each of the swatches and then finally I'm going to use my home brew all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them sit just for a little bit because it does take a little bit of time for um, even the Vallejo stuff to actually work its magic on the um, uh, on the paint. So just while that's happening, I'm going to talk about the cost of the home brew versus the um, Vallejo airbrush cleaner. So the propylene, or sorry, the uh, butyl glycol ether that cost me hundred dollars for five liters, and then the distilled water was. Um, I'll just say two dollars Australian for two liters, so essentially a dollar a liter. Now I do need, because the ratio is sort of two to one, I need ten liters of distilled water for every five liters of the um, glycol ether I've got. So together that makes about uh, fifteen liters, and all up that costs one hundred and ten dollars Australian for fifteen liters of homebrew um, airbrush cleaner. And that is a lot of airbrush cleaner. You're not going to go through that in a hurry. Now, if you compare that to the Vallejo stuff, if, uh, sorry, yeah, the Vallejo stuff, if I wanted to make the equivalent 15 litres of this, I worked out that it would cost me $1,125 Australian. So you can see there is a massive difference. It's literally 10% the cost of this stuff. You know, for a bottle of size, of homebrew, you're looking at about a dollar fifty versus um, fifteen dollars Australian. So it is a mar it is a major um, price difference. All right, so let's see how we go with this stuff. So I'm just going to use a cotton bud, and I might start with the um, so this is the AK, and this is just the distilled water. So. You can see distilled water, it's actually made kind of lumps in the paint and it is sort of, you know, starting to lift it up. There we go. And it's lifted. Okay. So the distilled water just by itself did a reasonable job, but I had to use a little bit of force in order to, you know, to actually get it off. Now the next one is the, um, the Vallejo. And as you can see, a little bit of force, but the stuff, you know, it comes off reasonably quickly. The next one is the home brew. So if I just give that a, a bit of a push. Now what's interesting is it's used about the same amount of force, but it has actually dissolved the paint a little bit better. And if you know what it's like to clean out an airbrush, what you actually want is you want the paint to dissolve because if it comes off in you know big chunks or, or whatever, it could get caught in your nozzle. So that's sort of interesting that it's actually dissolving the paint as opposed to the Vallejo stuff, which has just lifted it off completely. There's sort of no real you know dissolving going on. So as far as the AK stuff goes, I reckon the homebrew's a winner. Um, you know, not only is it cheaper, but it actually behaves a bit better. Now, the next row is the uh, Mecca color from Vallejo. So we'll start with the distilled water. And I'm going to use quite a bit of force to get that to lift. 
It does lift eventually, but it takes a fair bit of force. So the next one is the um, layout. And what's really interesting is that it's not coming off. Oh, it's taken a fair bit of effort. So I know the Mecha color is a bit different from their Model Air in the fact that it is actually designed specifically for sort of Gundam kits so that it does actually stick, you know, really well and, and that's showing here. But that's the Vallejo airbrush cleaner and it took a little bit of force to remove that. So let's see how the homebrew does. And as you can see, it's just lifting straight off. Now it's not dissolving like the, um, the AK stuff. So, you know, that's a bit disappointing, but the fact that it took less force to remove it than the, um, you know, the product that was made for it. And then finally, we've got the Steinal Res. So these paints work a little bit differently because they are polyurethane uh, based. So they're not sort of like these uh, two paints down here. Okay, so distilled water. Yeah, that's, that's taken quite a bit of force to actually get that to come off. So distilled water by itself isn't really enough. It is coming off, there we go but it took a bit of force. Now the next one is the Vallejo um, uh, airbrush cleaner and I don't expect this to behave particularly well with this primer. It's not, this particular brand of airbrush cleaner is not designed specifically for this type of paint so I'm not really expecting the, uh, the Vallejo stuff to do particularly well here. It has lifted around the edges and it looks like it will lift off. But again, it's just taking a little bit of force there. Right, and then finally we've got the home brew. And literally no force at all, that's just lifted straight off. So for me, you know, since I discovered this stuff, um, it was a complete no-brainer. Um, the homebrew stuff, not only is it cheaper, but it works really well. I mean, you are talking about a a solvent that you do have to be careful with you know you don't want to be sort of getting it in your eyes or um, you know certainly you don't want to be drinking it um, and it is flammable and all those sort of things but the the thing is is that a lot of these cleaners have similar products in them they have similar sort of solvents in them to help um, lift the paint so I hope you got something from that and um, until the next video I'll catch you later